Green Steam Team. Hello everyone, thanks for joining the Extreme Steam Team. Today we're going to be talking about reptiles. This is my Palligator Brutus. Thanks, thanks. So glad to join you today. Do you know the difference between alligators and crocodiles? I don't actually. Can you tell me? Sure. Alligators will see you later. Crocodiles in a while. Ugh, you're always so snappy with your punchlines, Brutus. Ha ha ha! So, who is going to teach us about reptiles today? Alright, our friend Petrie interviewed Jade from the Santa Fe College Teaching Zoo. Let's go to the Dish with Petrie to see what they learned about scales and reptiles. Ah! Welcome to the Dish with Petrie, and I'm your host, Petrie! Yay! Alright, today we will be having a special guest coming to us from somewhere where there are lots of crawly, scaly critters. Let's check the Petrie scope right now. Why, it's Miss Jade from the Santa Fe College Teaching Zoo. Hello, Miss Jade. Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you today? I'm fine. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk to you today. Yeah, me too. So, <laughs> I am told that you work at the Santa Fe college teaching zoo that i do i get to work with zookeepers and meet lots of people every day and talk to them about animals really what kinds of animals oh we have everything you can think of we have animals you can find right here in florida like alligators and some different kinds of birds you might find like spoonbills but we also have animals you could find across the ocean like asian small clawed otters or even tree kangaroos wow do you also have like the scaly kinds of animals over there? Lots and lots of scaly kinds of animals over here. Any kind you can think of. Wow. Uh, so I heard that you also have like reptiles and amphibians. Is that correct? We do. We have both. We have a reptile house here. We call it our herp house. And we have both frogs and different kinds of lizards and snakes in there. Did you just say herp house? Yeah, herp house. It's short for herpetology house. So what is herpetology? Uh, well, herpetology is the study of reptiles and amphibians. And that can be not just studying about their physiology, like how they look, but also things like their behavior and different things about how they're classified. Wow. Am I a reptile? <laughs> No, you're covered in fur, so I bet you're a mammal. Okay, so what do reptiles look like? Well, usually reptiles are covered in something. Do you have an idea of what reptiles are covered in? What's all over their skin? Any guesses? No, uh, not fur, I guess. <laughs> well, actually, reptiles are usually covered in scales, and they can look all kinds of different ways, but all reptiles have scales, and that's one of the ways you can tell them apart from birds or mammals. And they're also what we call ectothermic. Ectothermic? What? <laughs> I know, that's a big word. Yeah. You've probably heard the term cold-blooded before, right? Yes. 
Well, actually, what that's referring to is ectotherms. So reptiles and amphibians, and even some animals like fish and insects, are ectothermic, which basically means they don't do things like we do as mammals, where we can pant or sweat, things to help us cool off. They actually rely on their outside environment to regulate their inside temperature. Wow. So what happens to reptiles when it gets too cold? Well, it kind of depends on the reptile. There's actually some reptiles and amphibians that like cooler temperatures, like salamanders, for instance. So every reptile or amphibian has an optimum temperature that they like to be at. So if it gets too cold for a reptile that likes it to be really warm, their body will actually start to shut down. They won't digest their food, their breathing slows down, their heart slows down, everything just slows down. Wow. Um, and they do something similar to mammals. We know like bears or hibernate, right? Well, males will do something called brumation, where they'll slow down all of their body if it gets too cold outside that they can't get to a warm enough place to get all those systems working. So they'll kind of go into a hibernation um, until the season changes. Oh, wow. So what if it gets too hot? Would that be fine for a reptile? Uh, actually, it could have a similar effect because, like I said, reptiles have their temperatures that they are most comfortable on, and it depends on what type of reptile they are. So if it gets too, too hot, they have to do things like go into cool water or dig a burrow or go into the shade to get cool. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. So um, I have a question about scales. All right. So all animals that have scales are not necessarily reptiles, correct? <laughs> so all reptiles have some type of scale. It might look really different depending on the reptile because they come in all sizes and shapes and structure. But all reptiles have scales. But there are other animals that have scales, too. What happens to the scales when a reptile grows? Well, what's really cool, and most people don't realize, most animals shed their skin in some way. Like when you take a shower every day, a little bit of your skin comes off. So nice, fresh skin can come out. But for reptiles, as they get bigger, they'll actually do something called shedding. And depending on the type of reptile you are, that can look in different ways. So a snake looks like almost like if you had your sock on really tight and you pulled it off inside out, their whole skin and scales will come out inside out so they can have nice, fresh new scales and grow. Whereas a lizard might break off in pieces over time. So it just kind of depends on the type of reptile you are. Wow, that is so cool. So yeah. it's different from like my hair falling when I take a shower. <laughs> yeah, what's cool though is scales are made out of the same thing as your hair. It's called keratin. So your hair and scales and fingernails and rhino horns are all made out of keratin. We all have that similar, <laughs> isn't that cool? Yeah, it's like, I can't stop looking at my hands. <laughs> I know, wow. you'll never see your fingernails the same again. Yeah, <laughs> you're close to scales, fingernails. <laughs> yep, wow, awesome. So, what type of reptiles do you have in the zoo? We have so many kinds of reptiles, almost any of you can think of. We do have some big alligators at our zoo, Brutus and Rainbow. We have different types of snakes you might find right here in Florida, like um, we have Eastern Diamondback rattlesnakes and corn snakes and Florida pine snakes. And then we have some really cool lizards. We have Gila monsters, which are a venomous type of lizard from Arizona. Uh, we have Carusia, which are a prehensile tailed skink. So we have some really cool reptiles and of course, turtles and tortoises because we love, love tortoises here at the zoo. And we have some giant ones like Galapagos tortoises. Really? I didn't know that turtles were reptiles too. Yeah, they're covered in scales and they're ectothermic. Wow. So do reptiles make good pets? And do you have one with you right now? I'm glad you asked that, actually. So I'll introduce her and then we can talk a little bit about reptiles as pets. Let's see. What she was taking a nap. So we'll see if she's ready to meet everybody. All right. 
Well, this right here, this is Ophi. I know, look at her. Look at her. Yeah, so big. I know, it's, I can't even show her on the whole. Yeah. Look, so big. So what kind of animal do you think I have here? It looks, Ophi looks like a snake. She does, absolutely. Well, she is actually a legless lizard. <gasps> what? I know, I bet you didn't. We actually have some legless lizards right here in Florida called Eastern glass lizards. Um, but Ophi is actually from Europe. So they get really, really big, much bigger than the ones we have here. And there's a few ways you can tell that she's a lizard and not a snake. One is she has a very long tail. Snakes usually have a little itty bitty tail at the end, but yeah. they have half their body. You can see where that little line ends. <laughs> That's actually where her tail begins. So it's this whole second half. And just like many lizards, she could actually break off her tail if she got nervous or scared from a predator. And it would wriggle and wiggle on the ground. So it would give her a chance to get away if that, um, so that predator doesn't eat her. Another way we can tell, we'll see if she can show us right here. She's got little holes on the side of her head. See those there? That's actually her ear holes. Snakes don't have ear holes. They hear through vibrations in the ground. So she can actually hear. And she also, if she wanted to, she could blink and wink at us because she has eyelids. Whereas snakes don't. They actually have a they actually have a scale over their eyes. And when they shed, that scale sheds with them. Yeah, she kind of, I always really love her because she looks so much like a dragon to me. Look at those really special scales. They look really, really special. And that's because they are, they're called osteoderms on top of her back here. And they're much harder bone scales instead of the normal just keratin scales that you might see in most snakes. Ooh. <laughs> Curious. Do you see what she's doing with her tongue there? Yeah. <laughs> she's she's trying to smelling. So, really? Yeah. Can you smell they, I know she wants to. It's yeah. curious. And these guys usually eat things like rodents. Uh, in the wild, they might eat things like snails. And she's really cute. When she's done eating at the zoo, she'll actually lick her lips after. That's how we know she's all done. <laughs> Which wow. Snakes can't do that. So, can you get one as a pet? Great question. We. You technically could, but um, we like to teach people how to be responsible pet owners at the zoo. We recognize not everybody wants to own a cat or a dog, but um, we do want people to think about how many extra responsibilities reptiles have. We talked about how they're ectotherms. So whereas your dog might be able to pant to cool down and maybe you just give them some water, our reptiles need heat lamps and lots of options to cool off and cool down. So they need a special habitat where you can provide all those things. And they also eat things maybe you don't even want to touch or feed. Your dog likes dog food, but Ophi here likes mice. And maybe you don't feel like <laughs> feeding that. They yeah. all have a really long time. Any guesses on how old Ophi is? Uh, 10? She's 35 years old. Really? Yeah, and she could live another 10 years. Wow. Reptiles live a lot longer than people think, and they deserve to have a nice long life with the family that chooses them. So we always try to make sure people make really wise choices and do lots and lots of research about reptiles before they think about getting one, because you might have them a really long time, and they need that really, really special care. Yeah. I think she's letting me know she probably wants to go back in her habitat for the remainder of the show. So we'll say goodbye to Opie. All right. Goodbye, Opie. <laughs> wow. I did not know that you need a lot. They need a lot of tender care. They definitely do. What other reptiles do we have here in Florida? Well, in Florida, we have alligators, which are amazing. They're huge. They're the largest reptile we have here in um, in our area, actually. So they get really, really big. Brutus, our, our alligator here, he's 12 feet long, which is pretty big. He weighs like 430 pounds. Um, <laughs> but we also oh, have the amazing like snakes. We have over 40 species of snakes right here in Florida and so many types of lizards. And we have the gopher tortoise here and tons of turtles. We live in a special place for reptiles because it's nice and warm here. 
Wow. So, what's the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? Good question. Well, they are both crocodilians, um, but if you just look at them, you can actually tell some differences right away. Um, alligators usually have a rounded snout. So, um, that also means that they have more room for their teeth to tuck in. So you usually only see a couple teeth sticking out when they have their mouth closed. Whereas a crocodile has a pointed snout and all their teeth interlock on the outside. So they have these big toothy grins when you look at them. So just by looking at them, you can see the difference. And generally crocodiles get bigger than alligators. They can get bigger by quite a few feet. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah. So you were talking about the alligator as the biggest reptile here in Florida, was that right? The, the, at least the biggest one we have near us. We do have American crocodiles in South Florida and they can get a little bigger than our alligators. Wow, what about the smallest? So the smallest, I don't know what the smallest reptile in Florida is, but the smallest reptile in the world was actually just found this last year. It's called a nano chameleon, and it's only about the size of your thumbnail. It's super, super tiny, and they found it in Madagascar, which is pretty amazing to even learn that we're still finding new animals every, every year. Scientists are exploring the world all the time and finding new things. You can say that finding it was what in a chameleon! Ah. <laughs> nice. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. oh, wow, Miss Jade! You really know a lot of stuff about reptiles here in Florida and even around the world. Oh, you thank you. A cool job, you know? I do. Yeah. We gonna be like you when I grow up. Ah, uh, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. So, are there any real dragons out there? <laughs> Actually, kind of. If you go across the ocean, you can meet a Komodo dragon, which is kind of like a real dragon. They're pretty special, and they have some pretty special magical things about them. A Komodo dragon? Mm-hmm. Does it also breathe fire? It doesn't breathe fire, but it does have some special things about it. It has um, really special hunting techniques, and it gets really big, like 10 feet. So it gets pretty massive. Wow. And where did you say you can find one? Uh, you can find them at a place like Indonesia. So they're in the Pacific. Oh, wow. And could I keep one as a pet? You probably wouldn't want that. They actually have a special bacteria in their saliva. So if they, they bite something over time, it will it'll make it go down so they can eat it. So uh, it's probably not a pet you would want to have around. So they potentially could be pretty dangerous. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> pretty, not fire breathing, but pretty scary nonetheless. Yeah. Wow. Well. It was really fun to have you today, Miss Jade. Thank you for having me. I had a great time. Yeah, I learned a lot from you. I learned about herpetology, what reptiles are, why they're cold-blooded and stuff, what reptiles we have in Florida, and I even got the chance to meet Poopy. Yay! <laughs> Yay! I mean, I really learned a lot from the gecko. <laughs> oh. I'm going to steal that one. <laughs> All right, you can have it. Well, <laughs> hope to hear from you again soon. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Wow, that was fun and exciting. I did not know that lizards can look like snakes, too. Well, I'm going to make like a frog and leap out of here. But before I jump back into the pond, let's see what Chemistry Kim and Jurassic Jessica are doing right now. To the Petri scope. Beep, 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 boop. Thanks, Petri, for that wonderful interview. This is Jude, our special guest. She's going to help us with our art project today. 
Wow, I learned so much about reptiles from Jade. How about you? I did too. <sighs> it's amazing that scales are made from keratin and that they protect reptiles from injuries. I know Jade didn't show any real dragons, but it makes me wonder. Hey Jude, do you think a dragon would use its scales in the same way as the reptiles we just learned about? I bet it would. But since dragons are make-believe, we can make scales however we want. I think dragons might have fireproof scales. I think they would have shiny, sparkly scales. I have an idea, Chemistry Kim. Yeah? Why don't we make our own dragon scales? Wow, that sounds like fun. How can we do that? It is so easy. We're going to end up making a dragon. And I hope it's going to look like this. That is beautiful. Because it flies. So we're going to take cardstock and cut it into a strip and have a pointy top on both ends. And then we're going to fold it. And you're just going to fold it one after the other until it looks like an accordion. Can you do that? I bet you can do that. Then, we're going to do some more fun stuff. Oh, I forgot. We have a dragon that has very shiny silver scales, and I bet this one is fireproof. I want to make one like that. Oh, good. I will make a green dragon, okay? So we have some pieces cut up. We're going to take our pieces, and I have them cut kind of like a house. It's a little wonky, but kind of like a house. If you take this Kim, a big piece, and we're going to take our favorite thing glue, and we're going to glue the big piece onto the pointy top. Uh, put a lot of glue on there. Now you're going to stick it right at the fold so that it won't stop the dragon from flying. Okay, so we're going to have one here. And then we're going to put another one on, and it's going to be at the other end. One end's going to be the head, and one's going to be the tail. Alright, so we're going to get this one on. Oh my. Okay. Alright, we're getting started. Now what are we going to do? We have to take our scales, and we're going to glue them on. And you're going to take a couple, because it takes a couple to make a nice row of scales. So you're going to go to your next fold. You're going to put some glue on. And then you're going to stick your, your little scales right on the edge of the fold. And if you need to, you can put a little more glue on. Okay, we're getting, see, we're starting to build, build our Alright, let's do another row. We're going to do the same thing. Put a lot of glue on there and we're going to take some pieces of paper and go right up to the fold. Alright, you can see we're starting to do really good. So let's go ahead and finish this. Alright, All right, let's keep going. Alright, 
Miss Kim, how are you doing? I think we're ready. All right, let's see. Ooh, one of my wings fell off. Oh, no. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I lost the wing too. It needs to dry. Well, this means we get to use more of our favorite glue. glue. Make sure you use a lot of that glue. So now we have a dragon on our own. What do you think? This was so much fun. Thanks, June. And thank you for being a part of the Extreme Steam Team. I hope you had as much fun as we did today. Up next, we have an amazing book talk. That was amazing. I just love lizards. What's your favorite reptile? Hmm, I might be a little biased because I have a pet tortoise named Tort. Tort is a Russian tortoise. He is five years old, but he could live to be about 50 but he won't get much bigger than this. Now we have all kinds of cool books at the Marion County Public Library about cold-blooded buddies. I have a book here that Torts would just love called Follow the Moon Home by Philippe Cousteau and Deborah Hopkinson. This book is about a community that works together to help sea turtle hatchlings find their way back to the ocean. It's a perfect book for any young activist out there. Oh, you're right, Torts would definitely like that. I have another awesome book here called Amazing Snakes by Sarah Thompson. This book has all kinds of cool snake facts. Like did you know that snakes can be found almost anywhere? And they come in all different sizes. Some can be the size of your pinky and some can be just as long as a school bus. What? I know, isn't that wild? That book has some really great facts. Here's another book that's just amazing called Life According to Og the Frog by Betty Burney. This book is about Og, a frog, who finds himself in room 26 of the Longfellow School. He's surrounded by human children and a furry cleaver named Humphrey. Will he find his way back to the swamp, or will he stay in the classroom? Hmm, interesting. I wonder what he'll do. Now, how can I get one of these library books? Oh, that's easy. All you need is a library card. With a library card, you can check out these books at any Marion County Public Library. Oh, perfect. I'm going to have to hop on down to the library and get me one of these books. Me too. You should really check these out. See you at the library.